Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Richmond and today I want to share with you on how to prepare the design brief for your upcoming renovation of your new home. Right? Renovation itself is uh, probably like you know one of the most exciting times in like you know getting a new house, right? You know, that's when you can really do what your dream home that is really made for you and your family lifestyle. So exciting times. Right, so considering that you know it is probably the next biggest item that you spend money on right you you bought a new house with a hefty sum of money you are in debt now you have to spend the next big bulk of your budget on renovation right so you need to make sure that it is all well spent right the money is all well spent so preparation and uh it's very very important and the most important thing in re in your renovation preparation is your design brief right this particular document will help you a lot you know whether you are engaging a uh, uh, interior designer or a contractor or designing uh, the house yourself the design brief will be your point of reference it will be something that will guide you through your journey something that you can always refer to right my wife and i are currently working with an interior designer right now for our new house right it's coming and the design brief has been very helpful for us when we built that particular document ourselves and you know we got praised by many interior designers that we have met right? we come prepared we know exactly what we want so there are three main benefits of having a design brief at the very start of your renovation journey right the first one is of course it helps you to consolidate your thoughts right it helps you to put everything together right and along the way as you get more ideas as you research you read more you look at more pictures you refine you reconsider you make changes and eventually right you have an idea of your dream home right your thoughts are really not you know scattered all over the place right sometimes you see a new idea but you forgot to put it in but you don't miss out the details you don't forget your ideas so that's how the design brief will help you right the second benefit is that it helps to save you time Right, when you meet with various designers right usually you know when you meet with interior designers the first appointment the first meeting is usually about uh, requirements gathering right understanding uh your 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 lifestyle your preference and things like that right your, your preferred design so technically right you are actually building the design brief right with the designer so having this done up front right prepared up front right and providing it before even the first meeting with the designers right the designers have more information to work on right they can actually start to do the layout right start to do some pre-planning so immediately when you meet the designer you are actually going for the second uh, second meeting with them right imagine you are meeting five interior designers right how many hours have you saved right you have saved many hours uh, for all these requirements gathering and things like that and you don't have to repeat your requirements multiple times right imagine you have to repeat five to ten times the last benefit is that the design brief helps you to evaluate right it helps you to select the designer that you want to work with right because you have put everything together right you have one common document right you have one set of requirements one set of information right all the designers will get the same brief the same set of information right so that helps you to make better comparison right that's where you can tell who is better who is not not something that we that you want to work with right so from here you know exactly like some designers are more attentive to your needs, right? Whether they do consider uh, various factors that you are included, right? Or do you tell them everything that they need to know, right? It's like a test paper, right? Like an exam paper, right? Everybody got the same set of questions. That's how we know who is good, who is not so good, right? So without the brief, you know, sometimes you may miss out points, right? Or if the designer didn't ask you a lot of questions and you didn't tell them exactly what you want, right? Then the proposal, when they prepare, right? It will not be as ideal. And that will you, you know make you uh, a lot harder to make good decisions so this is why the design brief is always so important right, so even if you don't work with like interior designers you want to do the design yourself the brief still serves as your point of reference right it's something that you can always rely on so making sure that you know you consider all the points you make and you just cannot remember so many details right the design brief will help you to consolidate them together Right and right and give you that proper documentation, right? So imagine you can, you know, sometimes you recall uh, certain points or details, right, between your actual renovation, right, and your and you haven't factored that in, right? That will be a nightmare, right? So how do you put uh, the design brief together, right? What are the things that you should include in the design brief? So basically, how I approach it is that there are three things. 
right? Your lifestyle, right? Your desired lifestyle, how you intend to use the space, and finally your mood board. So let's talk about the first one, the lifestyle, right? So it's basically about you, right? It's about uh, you and your help, uh, your ha habits, right? You, you know how many people you are living with. What do you do at home? What are your interests? Do you cook a lot? Do you collect a lot of things? Or do you really, you know, work at home? Or do you have kids, right? Do you watch TV when you're having dinner? So it's a lot about your lifestyle, right? And do you host like guests? Do you play mahjong, right? Things like that. Right? Things like that will help you and the designers to really plan out the space, right? So, you know, renovation is all about you setting your new home that is bespoke to you, right? It is built for you to achieve your desired lifestyle, right? So also you can include like your non-negotiables, right? Things that you need to have, you want to have, right? Because all this information will help designers to factor in uh, all these requirements as well, right? You know, like sometimes like TVs in the bedrooms, right? You want to watch TV in the bedroom or you want bathtub at home or you want a kitchen island or you want more storage or you want more display rack for your toy collection, right? So you have to note down everything in the design brief. Right? The next one is really about you know how you intend to use your space. Like you know, uh like you want a dry kitchen, you like a wet kitchen, do you need a washer and dryer and things like that, right? And how and you intend to use like gas stoves, induction cooktops, right? Do you need a big fridge, small fridge? Or how about your rooms, a queen bed, a king bed, right? Do you need like vanity table with mirror? Right? Do you do you need shower areas for all your bathrooms? Like how about your kids, right? Many things, right? Do they need to play? Do you intend to like, you know, convert your one of your rooms into walk-in closet? All these are important information. So I think for me myself, right, I even go into the detail of exactly, you know, what brand, the model, that the appliances that I intend to get. No hundred not hundred percent confirmed yet, but we plan around this level of this. And lastly, your mood board, right? This is where you communicate the vibes uh, or the mood that you want to go for. So basically, it's the design style you want, you want right? So is it, is it really uh, industrial? Is it boho? Is it like modern lux? What are the colors do you want? You want wood? You want brown? You want white? Right? Sometimes you don't know exactly what you know, right? But maybe you know you like a bit of this and that and that's perfectly fine, right? How you prepare the mood board is really to really uh, research online, right? Collect a lot of photos that appears uh, appeal to you, right? Like the living rooms, the dining, the kitchen, the bedrooms, the bathrooms, right? So the more you see, the more you, photos you collect, right? The more you know what you are going for, right? So my suggestion is that you put all these photos that you have collected, right? Together in one single PowerPoint slide, right? When you see all these photos together, right? You will start to see some common details and or the some of these common colors. Uh, you know, you will see like, or you, maybe you like dark colors, you like the clean clean lines, uh -huh. right? or you like, you know, a lot more marble elements, or whether you have a lot like wood elements. So this is how you build up the mood board, right? So the more information that you collect, the more refined your desired style will be. And the designer will know, you know, how to plan out the colors, how to put them together nicely, and you know, and, and, also to really integrate your lifestyle and how you want your space to be, right? So you put everything, the three things together. Right? That's exactly how and what a design brief will do for you, right? So can you see how important and how useful the, this design brief will be? Right? It really helps to set you in the right direction, right? You will always have something to refer to whenever you face any problems, you want to make changes or you forgot about something, you can always refer to that document. So you stay within the scope, right? You have something to work with, right? So if you work with an interior designer, then you need to take that proactive step, right? Do your design brief first, right? Don't wait for the de designer to do for you, right? It tells the designer that, you know, you indeed know what you actually want and, and shows that you, how committed you are in your uh, renovation journey, right? So they will also take you a lot more seriously, right? They will then deliver exactly what you want. So always do your own design brief first, right? Don't wait for them to do for you. Right, so I am in my uh, re renovation journey right now, right? And I want to share things that I have learned along the way with you, right? So I post new videos, new photos about my new house, about how I do, do up the design brief, how, how I think about the various sectors, right? So that you can see, you know, what are things that you need to consider right, when you are actually doing your own renovation. 
So make sure you subscribe, make sure you follow me so that you don't miss out of, on any of these uh, videos that I put up for you. So give this video a big thumbs up so that I know that you enjoyed this and found this video uh, very helpful to you. So until next time, I will see you in the next video.